Hey guys, I found an insanely strong new ledge trapping option with Suplex. Not only is it active for 9 total frames, it also travels for almost a whole roll distance. This should be incredibly good for catching raw. Well, this is unfortunate, but if you do it in the other direction, it can still catch roll and neutral get a. Never mind. If you've seen MKLeo play, or Samsora, or Void, or any top player, then you know how important ledge trapping is. To effectively ledge trap, you need three things. The tools, the strategy, and the execution. For execution, well, that's just practice. But strategy is something you can learn a theory, depending on the tools you have. So I will show you five different ledge trapping strategies for me brawler, and explain how they work, which one is best, and at the end, I will also explain more advanced strategies you can use to condition your opponent for some early kills. So make sure to watch until the end. And if you think you've learned something, please subscribe, as it really helps me and my channel. Thank you. As you probably know, there are six different things every character can do at latch. Those are neutral get up, get up attack, jump, roll, latch drop double jump, and just doing nothing. Your goal when ledge trapping is to cover as many of those as possible, without putting yourself at too much risk. As a result, I will not include read-based options like charging F-Smash. Instead, I will make a list with all the strategies and which options they cover while we go over them. I will also include a difficulty rating in regards to reaction time when facing multiple options. Before we start, there is one more very important thing you need to know about getup options. That is, not all options are equally good looking at it objectively. While all of them are punishable by reads, some are way safer than others in general. Attack, for example, would be one of the weaker ones, simply because it has 30 vulnerable frames compared to neutral getup's one vulnerable frame before you can shield. Ledge jump, on the other hand, is widely said to be the definitive best option, as you can choose any follow-up option you want, like attacking, air dodging, double jumping, etc., just two frames after your invincibility ends. This is one significant effect, it is impossible to react to ledge jump even if you know it's coming, as long as they mix up their timing. Every other option can be reacted to. Of course, this can bait out ledge jumps a lot, and your opponent is still in a bad position, but it is still the best option. As a result, covering it the best way possible is a high priority, but also very difficult. But enough of the theory. Let's get into practice with Brawler's most efficient ledge trapping strategies. Strategy 1. Nair Spam. This is a strategy characters with long-lasting neutral airs are well known for, like Link, Fox and also Me Brawler. If you fast fall soon into your jump, you alternate between 18 frames of active hitbox and 11 frames of landing lag and startup. If you choose not to fast fall at all, you get 26 active frames. Doing this at latch is really good for catching jumps, but for the rest, it's kind of a gamble. While there's no doubt this method will pretty often lose against ledge drop areas, especially disjoints, for every other option it mostly depends on timing. If you predict your opponent's timing, doing this will cover every single option. Jump over getup attack, hit neutral getup with your active frames or grab on landing, dash back and grab rolls and fast fall down tilt against stalling. But if they get the timing right, all of these options can also beat nair spam. Especially neutral getup isn't as easy to cover as one might think because only 8 of your 18 frames of hitbox are low enough to hit your opponent, in this case Lucina. Against small characters, this would be even less likely. As a conclusion, this method is great for covering jumps, but is otherwise only good against buffered options with an easy timing. Strategy 2. SAK at roll distance. While this method seems very repetitive and simple, it is insanely effective as long as you got the timing down. Thanks to its range, you can stand slightly behind roll distance and outspace any getup attack or ledge drop area, and easily punish on reaction. Neutral getup is a little more tricky, but especially against tall characters, it is still really easy to hit. Even though neutral getup only has one vulnerable frame, the rising hitbox of SAK gives you a 4 frame window. With some practice, this isn't hard to get. Ledge jump, however, is even more tricky. While you aren't guaranteed to hit it on reaction, the counterplay is still limited. Neutral air dodge, covered by the falling it. Directional air dodge in, also covered. Attack, will most likely lose because SAK hits from under the opponent. Directional air dodge off stage, where they could do that, but what comes after that? Last option left is double jump, with or without neutral air dodge. And while this can work, depending on your timing, 
Your opponent is still high above you without a double jump and potentially also without air dodge. A great setup for catching landings with up smash, dash tag or even another SAK to start the whole thing again. What isn't covered by this, ironically, because I said you stand at roll distance, is, well, roll. To consistently hit neutral get up and potentially latch jump, you need to learn a specific timing. And this timing does not hit roll, neither with the rising nor with the falling hit. Latch stall is also not covered or threatened in any way, as dash in down tilt would take way too much time. But there's an alternative to down tilt pressure, which is... Strategy 3. Shot put and reactive latch trapping. Standard shot put distance, which is just a little further than roll distance from latch, and wait. If your opponent also chooses to wait, or their invincibility is about to run out, throw a shot put to force them to choose an option. Other than that, this method is purely reaction based. But fortunately, there's still a specific timing you could stick to. As soon as you see movement, dash towards ledge. Then, depending on what option they went for, go for dash grab on neutral get up and attack, pivot grab rolls, and jump up air ledge jump. While the timing is pretty much the same for each, your reaction time for multiple options must be really fast. As soon as a specific latch option is distinguishable, you need to choose the right option as fast as possible. If you can do that, every option except jump can be covered pretty well. This method is the most flexible one, but also the hardest to master. This is best against slow characters without any different options, so feel free to try it if you think you will be efficient with it. Strategy 4. Dropping shielded latch. Shielding has always been a strong option, but it has been nerfed from Smash 4 as you can't drop shield and punish roll and reaction anymore. But thanks to parrying, there's a different method which is just as strong. Dropping shield at just the right timing to parry ledge attacks. This allows you to dash backwards and back throw on reaction in case your opponent decided to roll. Neutral get up is a little more difficult due to the higher shield drop lag, but it's still possible to get. Same goes for ledge drop areas, which might get parried or not, depending on your opponent's timing and speed. Ledge jump and stalling also aren't as easy and mostly depend on your opponent's reaction time to your shield drop down tilt and your ability to quickly chase in the air. Very similar to number 4, strategy number 5, shielding at ledge and SAK out of shield. This has the added benefit of covering ledge drop areas, but the roll punish this time is a B reversed SAK. At low percent this will do some damage, but also return stage positioning to your opponent, so it might not be worth going for. If you're fast enough, you can also go for jump suplex for more damage. Everything else is pretty much the same as with method 4. So, which of these is the best strategy? Which flowchart is the definitive best one? The winner is... Well, all of them. And none of them. Let me explain. As you might have noticed, no matter how close all of these got, no strategy is unbeatable, especially when there come even more character specific options into play, like command grabs, projectiles and so on. So the actual question would be, when do I use which one? And that's where mix-ups and conditioning come into play. You have pretty much two options, mixing up your patterns before your opponent can adapt, or purposely let them adapt and save it all for the one punish. First the mix-ups. By constantly changing a strategy, you will pretty much always have the upper hand in terms of chances. Your opponent can't predict what's coming, but you can either, so you can take your consistent damage, maybe a stock once in a while, but that's it. But the really strong punishes start when you bait out your opponent over multiple interactions, literally conditioning them to feel rewarded for some options and avoid others out of frustration. I will do my best to explain what I mean by that. Some of the presented flowcharts tend to bait out specific options. For example, a frustrated opponent who keeps jumping into nair spam finally decides to be patient and times his get up attack instead of buffering it right after grabbing ledge. You don't know when you will start doing this, so maybe you even let yourself get hit one or two times until you are sure enough you will choose the same option again. But the next time, after doing two or three nairs right as your opponent grabs ledge, you suddenly switch your strategy. You switch to strategy 4, holding and dropping shield, parry his get up attack on reaction and F smash him to his death at 50%. Conditioning like this can be applied for any strategy. As you might have noticed, all of the flowcharts have at least one option which definitely beats it. And that's the one your opponent is most likely going to choose once they adapt to what you're doing. These weaknesses are the reason you can manipulate your opponent into choosing these options. Conditioning or baiting are terms which get tossed around pretty often, 
so I want to give you some real examples of how this would look as me brawler. Start the match by excessively covering rolls, just throwing out hitboxes, dash dancing around and making sure your opponent is scared to take that option. Then, after a while, begin using strategy 2, SAK and roll distance. Because the roll is the only real counter to the strategy, your chances of success will be very high. And because you conditioned your opponent to avoid rolling, you also have good chances of getting tons of damage before they realize the solution was right before their eyes. A different example. You decide to reactively ledge trap your opponent by dash dancing and waiting at roll distance, ready to dash grab any grounded option. Obviously, in this case, simply jumping over you would be absolutely free, right? After all, it has worked so many times before. Well, it is a good option. And that's why you decide not to dash dance back to roll distance this time, but instead call out their jump with your own jump heli kick for a kill at 45%. This looks like a 1 in a million sick read, but in reality it's quite the simple mind game between the options your opponent has realistically left. All this stuff seems pretty complicated, and to be honest, it is. Ledge trapping involves so much theory in mind games and can be frustrating when you try to apply it in a real match. Flowcharts like the one I made are supposed to help by reducing strain on your reaction time, by offering, well, a flowchart, with only two options instead of six. There are dozens of other strategies you can follow, like dash dancing at roll distance, which you can see MK Leo do a lot with Joker, or using shot put rolling from platforms with Brawler. I really recommend practicing ledge trapping with a training room mod or friends, as well as actively looking at your matches and the situations which you could have covered better. Do that and I'm sure improvement will come very soon. And if you need to hear the details again, feel free to move back in the video and rewatch the explanations. If you think I made a decent video, you can tell me with a like on this video. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe, it's free and it helps my channel a lot. Thanks for watching and until the next video.